Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel and today we're going to be talking about 10 preps that you absolutely must have taken care of before the big one hits. And that could mean different things. If you live along the coast, it could be a big hurricane that hits or it could just be the really big one that a lot of us are worried about right now because of all the craziness going on in the world. Things like war, full-scale economic collapse type things whatever the case may be. One prep that you gotta have is a good water filter. And of course, the cream of the crop is going to be Berkey filters. But as we all know, Berkey's, they, they started expensive and then they have gotten even worse, especially over the past year or so. So if buying like a full Berkey system, the filter and then the filtering elements is out of the question right now, you might be able to pick up some filtering elements, these black Berkey filters, and build your own out of some buckets. But really, those are getting expensive too. I think the last time I checked these were around $170, $175. The prices on them have just gotten absolutely ridiculous. So another thing that you can do with a bucket, and I showed this a while back in another video, is you can take something like a Sawyer tap filter, install a, uh, like a little spigot on a bucket, attach this to that, and then you got yourself a little gravity filter. So around 40 for that, 15 for the spigot, around less than $5 for the bucket, and you should have that. But the thing about the Sawyer Tap is it's not gonna remove nearly as much stuff as a Berkey will. So this might be something good to use as sort of a pre-filter to remove sediment and bacteria, won't remove chemicals, but you can boil the water also if you're worried about viruses. And it's also a good idea to have some portable water filters also, things like the Sawyer Mini, they're always good to have around. Life Straw is great also. But then probably the best portable option that we have today as far as what all it will remove are the Grail filters. These kind of like a Berkey will remove bacteria, viruses, chemicals, stuff like that. But the downside to them is that they do have a relatively short shelf life. They'll only, they won't, wrote, sorry, they won't filter nearly as much water as one of these, provided you back flush it and take care of it. And they do have a limited life just sitting on the shelf, especially if you open their packaging. And then in addition to these, it's also a good idea to have some water containers, things like aquatainers, military water cans, water bricks, or aqua bricks. The next prep that you want to have before the big one hits is a medicine and first aid stash. And unfortunately, I think this is one that a lot of people overlook, and it's not really something that you can just get in one spot from one kit because it has so many different parts. Probably the most obvious example would be things like band-aids, other bandages, uh, triple antibiotic ointment, but also things like antiseptics. I have isopropyl alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, also povidone iodine is good to have. Then think about what over-the-counter medications you use. Like you can tell what ails me. I got some allergy meds here, some heartburn meds, but also everybody should be stocking things like pain relievers, anti-diarrheal stuff like Pepto and Imodium just to deal with those very common things that happen to all of us. Then also, if you have any prescription medications that you use regularly, you want to have those. And then one that has been difficult to get in the past, at least through legitimate channels, has been antibiotics. I have a Jace case here. I did a review over them a while back. This has five different antibiotics in it that are prescribed to you through like real doctors and stuff like that. And if you want to see that video and learn more about that, then I'll be sure to put a link in the description below. The next prep that you gotta have taken care of is your long-term food storage. And this isn't stuff that you put in your fridge or your freezer or even a lot of things that you would put in your pantry. These are foods that, if stored correctly, will last for years or even decades. And probably the, the easiest way to go about doing that is to just get freeze-dried meals. The only problem with these is that they are very expensive. If you're going to store these in any quantities, you are going to be paying a bunch of money. I think a pouch like this is now around like $10, depending on where you get it. So if you are a new prepper and you don't have much food set aside yet and you're trying to get as much as possible, that's not the route that I would go at all. Instead, I would be focusing on things like dried beans, dried rice, put them in mylar like I've done here, 
then put that mylar in some food grade five gallon buckets. But you can put the food in mylar, like small mylar bags. You can put them in bigger ones, like they have five gallon bags that could fill an entire bucket with something like dried beans or rice. I like to have smaller denominations just because if I'm going to use a little bit, I don't want to go through the process of having to reseal five gallons worth of rice just for a couple of scoops of it. That's not something I want to do. Then, of course, canned goods, they're not going to last for decades like dried beans and rice and mylar in a bucket will, but they should last a couple years, so that's a good way to get your fruits, your veggies, and then also some different types of canned meat. And related to food storage, the next thing that you need to have is a way to cook off-grid. A lot of folks, when they first get started, myself included, get something like a propane or butane camp stove. And they're nice, they're convenient, they make your life a lot easier. But the big Achilles heel with these, of course, is you run the risk of running out of fuel and not being able to get more if you need it. So something like the Kelly Kettle, it runs on natural materials. You can get a fire started down in the fire base here using things like twigs, pine cones, even dried animal poo. And you're going to be able to do things like cook small meals, boil water. This is the base camp model, so I think it'll boil over 50 uh, ounces of water at once, which, which is nice. Haven't been able to test this yet because lo and behold, as soon as I get this in the mail before I can get a chance to test it, burn ban. And I don't really want to burn down half the county testing things for a YouTube video. So we will test this out at a later date. And another thing that you gotta have is stuff that you can cook in off grid. So if you're at your home or your bug out location or something like that, then cast iron is gonna be an excellent option. I got a cast iron skillet here. I got a Dutch oven with a grill pan top and that's new to me. It's another thing I haven't been able to test yet, but I've always wanted a good Dutch oven. This skillet, I don't know how old it is. These things, they if you take care of them, cast iron will literally last forever. I got this from my grandma. She might have got it from her mom. So this has been in family service for a long time and it's showing no signs of slowing down. But of course, cast iron, you can use it on uh, modern stovetops. Just be careful with glass stuff because it can scratch it up. Then also you can stick this stuff in the oven. You can even put it on hot coals in a campfire or something like that. So it's incredibly versatile. It's pretty easy to take care of once you get the hang of it. All you really got to have is some oil and some maybe some salt to scrub it with and one of those little chain mail rags and you really don't even have to have that. It just makes it easier. But as far as lightweight portable stuff, then something like just small stainless steel things. These are going to be relatively lightweight, easy to carry. And then of course, like thinner stainless steel cookware is going to be good for that things like that Kelly kettle that I showed a minute ago because it's not going to be so big and bulky and heavy like this Dutch oven that it becomes difficult or in some cases impossible to use with those smaller cooking devices. And another thing that you've got to have before the big one hits is a reliable way to start a fire. Here I have a few different options and y'all you don't need all of these. A lot of time when you see prepper videos I think it's like oh I, if I don't have every single one of these things I'm not prepared. That's not really the case. But I have some stormproof matches here. I have a couple lighters. These little ones, of course, are good for keeping in your bug out bag. And these longer ones are better for stuff around the house. And I mean, it would work really well for getting a fire started in that Kelly Kettle fire base. Then also a ferro rod. I do like the bigger ones. They're easier to hold on to. <coughs> Sorry. And you also have more more sparks out of these just because there's so much more material here one of these could last a very very long time now if i could only have two i would probably have a good stash of lighters like this that i could take with me stash different places around the house and then a big honk and ferro rod like this i think between those two things it's going to cover you um, in a lot of different situations and of course it's a good idea to have different kinds of, I guess, surefire tender, I guess you could call them. Things like these mini infernos that are very easy to light. They'll 
they'll light even when wet and they'll burn a little while to help you get a fire established. And then you really you don't even have to go out and buy these. You can just do the old cotton ball and Vaseline trick and that'll help you get a fire started pretty reliably. The next prep that you have to have taken care of before the big one hits is a good cutting tool. And you have a couple different options, but I think it's probably best to have all of them. A lot of people gravitate towards a multi-tool so that they have a blade and then a nice little tool kit to go along with it. And then also things like can openers. This is a Swiss tool. I know a lot of people like things like the Leatherman Wave because of the one-handed blade, but I always carry a one-handed blade with me anyway, so it doesn't really bother me that this doesn't have it. But then also things like just general camp knives. This is a BK-16. This is what I chose to use. I, I, I like it a lot. This is one of my favorite knives. I don't think I have another one in my collection that I'm able to get sharper than this thing. But things like the Ontario Rat 5 are good options. Of course, the SE4. The SE4 is going to be a little bit more expensive, but once you start adding goodies, like I've added a, um, a Kydex sheath to this, of course, the, the price does go up eventually. But also, things like axes and hatchets, like the one that I showed in the tractor supply video, are good to have as well. The next thing that you've got to have taken care of before the big one hits is a way to generate and store power. Probably the most obvious example is going to be something like a gas generator. We've all seen them before. You can go into... Most big box stores and buy one, especially places like Lowe's and Home Depot, so they're everywhere. But the Achilles heel with those, of course, is eventually they're going to run out of fuel if the situation lasts long enough. And storing fuel for those can be a challenge. But then on the other side of things, there's solar. It's not as good as for powering big stuff for an extended period of time, but it's really good for keeping smaller items running pretty much indefinitely. And of course, you can't just have the box. You can't just have like this is the EcoFlow River. You've got to have panels to go with it to be able to enjoy that, that long-term usefulness. And then as far as storing energy, of course, this stores energy, but also batteries, things like rechargeable D cells, if you have power tools, and of course, try to get some extra batteries for those. And then even portable battery banks, like I have one keeping my camera on right now because the internal battery on the camera itself is quite horrible. But having things like that will allow you to store energy and use it to keep essential devices, things like lights, fans, and even motion sensors running long term. The next prep that you need to have taken care of before the big one hits is lighting and climate control. So for lighting, of course, you want to have personal lighting options like headlamps and flashlights. And then you also want to have area lighting that you can use for entire rooms that you can set down on a countertop to let you work in a particular area, use the bathroom, take a shower. If the water's still on, do whatever you need to do because, you know, prepare for big stuff and little stuff also. Also, you want to have things like fans, like this is the hottest that it's been here since 2011. If the power were to go out and you didn't have at least like a fan or something, that would be pretty bad. So this runs off of D-cells, and of course I have rechargeables for that. And then if something happens in the winter, you want to have some heat, you want to have a heater and have plenty of fuel to keep that running as long as you need to. And another prep that you absolutely have to have taken care of before the big one hits is defense. We're in a day and age where people seem to be getting more violent, more desperate, more angry as every day or every month passes. It, it's, it's getting pretty troubling looking at all the stuff that's going on now. So you definitely need to have a way to defend yourself, your loved ones, and then also, I mean, your preps. So I'm a firm believer in having the most effective means of defense as possible for you in your situation, whatever that may be. I touched on this in a video a week or two ago. If you're somebody who lives overseas, you might not have the options that I have here. And even if you live in a different state, like I live in Texas, if you're somebody who lives in California, your, your options might be very different. So get the most effective Thing to defend yourself that you can, whether it's an AR, a lever action, or a baseball bat or bear spray, and know how to use it and be willing to use it if necessary. And then also goes beyond that, have things that will allow you to know if somebody's coming your way, things like motion sensors, lights, and y'all, the lights aren't really to necessarily illuminate the area 
or to scare the person off. It's that when in your, you're in your house and that light kicks on, you know that something is going on out there. Then, of course, some other areas of preparedness that you should have taken care of that don't, well, they probably should make the top 10, but only had 10 spots, but they're worth talking about, are going to be things like tools and power tools. Those are good to have to make repairs after a disaster, build fortifications. Then also communications. I probably should have lumped that with like the power generation or the lighting and the fans and all that kind of stuff because you do have you do need a way to know what's going on around you whether it's something like a two-way radio to communicate with your neighbor ham radio or something like a small emergency radio so hope you guys enjoyed it y'all have a good and thanks again